On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including SpaceX works on a Starship fuel tanker prototype while waiting for a test launch date, NASA announces an expansion plan for the Kennedy Space Center that could include a new star factory, and Sierra Space improves on their inflatable habitat tech. This is the Space Race. While SpaceX waits for the bureaucratic red tape to clear for their next Starship test flight, the engineers at Starbase Boca Chica are not being idle. In a very typical fashion, the SpaceX team is simply continuing to work on construction projects around the site, including the manufacturing and testing of new prototype Starships. For example, Ship 26 was recently spotted getting some work done at the test stand just to the side of the orbital launch mount. We haven't really seen Ship 26 in a while, but this latest view has some folks confused. As you can see, this prototype doesn't have flaps or even heat shield tiles, no cargo bay doors or Starlink dispensers either. Earlier sightings of Ship 26 showed these same things, of course, but back then it was too early to tell if those features simply hadn't been added yet. And to be fair, they still could be, but as Ship 26 appears to be being prepped to make a static fire test, it's far more likely that we are seeing the very first test article for one of the most important systems in the SpaceX ecosystem, the Starship Orbital Fuel Depot. The idea is to design a Starship that's just entirely a fuel tank, which the company will put into low Earth orbit and keep topped up in case another Starship might need more fuel for a longer flight. SpaceX has plans for several variants of their Starship, a crew type, an uncrewed cargo type, a lander, even versions that can be used to make space stations, and a fuel tanker variant would support all of these. And while it might be too early to tell exactly what Ship 26 will be used for, its lack of fins or heat shield tiles as it is preparing for static fire would seem to point to the fact that 26 is not intended to come back down to Earth. And more than that, SpaceX testing a potential fuel tanker version of their Starship lines up with their timeline for an orbital refueling demonstration that they are obligated to perform. It may have gotten lost in the turmoil of testing and FAA investigations, but one of the biggest reasons for the scramble to get a second test flight done for Starship was that the company is on a tight schedule to get the vehicle up and running in time to participate in the Artemis moon missions, specifically Artemis 3, for which NASA has contracted the company's human landing system Starship variant. Due to take place in 2025, the SpaceX HLS is due to carry a crew of NASA astronauts to the surface of the lunar south pole. But before that can happen, NASA wants SpaceX to prove a few things. Obviously, the first is that their Starship can actually get into orbit, and in that same thought that the lander variant can, you know, land. But the other critical test for the Starship ecosystem is the in-orbit refueling using a Starship fuel tanker. And if Artemis 3 is to remain on schedule, that means that the testing period for both the lander and the fuel depot vehicles have to be completed in 2024, and so it follows that we should be seeing prototypes for those two vehicles about now if SpaceX plans to nail that timeline. Now, looking over Ship 26, we can't see many exterior signs of new tech, but that doesn't mean much if, for instance, Ship 26 isn't meant to test how Starship's fuel handles being in orbit for long periods of time, then all it would need to have is a bunch of internal tanks and some sensors. Some folks have also suggested that this ship could be used to test maneuverability in orbit using its reaction control thrusters, which is definitely something this variant could test without needing many conspicuous upgrades. But as it definitely doesn't seem to have any sort of ship-to-ship -ship docking collars, it's not likely to be testing the actual refueling functionality of a fuel depot. Seeing Ship 26 getting worked on while we wait for word of the next Starship launch is encouraging. Like we said, SpaceX is also on a very tight schedule and they can't afford to sit around even when government agencies slow things down with investigations and environmental surveys. So it's a good thing the SpaceX team has plenty to work on in the meantime. On September 12th, NASA revealed an expansion plan for the Kennedy Space Center in Florida inviting the public to comment on the new facilities. The document detailed several improvements for the busy spaceport, not least of which was an over 100-acre expansion of the SpaceX Roberts Road facility near Pad 39A, where the company launches most of their Falcon 9s 
and is currently building their orbital launch apparatus for Starship. SpaceX currently uses their roughly 50-acre plot at the Roberts Road site to maintain their fleet of Falcon 9 rockets that operate from Pad 39A. This makes a good deal of sense as transporting even a tough rocket like the Falcon 9 from a further location would just be asking for delay causing mishaps. In a similar manner, then, it makes sense that SpaceX would want to eventually expand their facilities on the Florida coast to at least accommodate the maintenance of an active fleet of starships. Transporting the largest rocket ever built from Texas to Florida, even by barge, seems like a pretty terrible idea, and obviously, NASA agreed. The expansion follows fairly closely to the original plan laid out in 2020, which was drawn up in phases as these sorts of multi-year construction projects often are. Even back then, SpaceX was planning to at least grow its Falcon 9 program and knew it would need more room eventually. Since then, however, the company has gained a new Starship-flavored focus, and so the northern expansion of the site will mostly be taken up by an enormous new hangar, which is very likely to be a new Starship maintenance and production facility not unlike the Star Factory at Boca Chica. The plan looks fairly easy to complete. Most of the literal groundwork was done in early 2021, when the first phase of the facility was constructed. Electrical, water, and internet service is already there, and would just need to be routed a little further northwards, and the supplemental environmental assessment NASA presented in their announcement seems to agree that the expansion isn't a big issue either. The real problem is the gas line routing, which is always a pain even in less industrial construction, but a much bigger deal is a proposed expansion of the Saturn Causeway, an 8 meter wide road that links the historic vehicle assembly building to Pad 39A, and which SpaceX hoped to use for transporting their Starship from the new facility to the pad. The problem is that the Starship is wider than the Saturn rockets were, in fact, the Starship is 9 meters in diameter, which would overhang the road. Their request is to widen the old causeway to 10.3 meters to accommodate Starship and its SPM transport vehicles. But in the grand scale of things, even these seemingly difficult engineering challenges are not much to worry about. Digging gas lines and widening roads is fairly straightforward compared to wrangling an environmental survey. But considering that part is already done, all SpaceX has to wait for here is for the public comment period to close, and if by October 16th no major issue is brought forward by residents nearby, NASA will make a final assessment, and SpaceX will be able to start planning their next big construction project. On September 20th, Hawaii played host to the fifth test of the inflatable life module made by Sierra Space, and the test article passed with flying colors. The large integrated flexible environment is a mostly fabric habitation module designed to unfold during an orbital flight by inflating. Sierra designed the 330 cubic meter module to be used on both the upcoming Blue Origin led Orbital Reef Space Station project and with their Dream Chaser crewed shuttle craft for longer duration missions. Most tests of the design right now are being conducted on smaller, subscale versions of the real thing and are usually burst tests, which, as the name would suggest, involve inflating the hab until it pops. This particular test added a metallic plate meant to simulate a window which will be built into the design in the final version, but instead of weakening the design by breaking up the form of the inflatable module as one might expect, the metal plate ended up lending some extra strength, allowing the module to survive a full 20% more pressure than previous tests, and an overall 33% margin of safety over the certification standard for this sort of crewed space. Obviously, this thrilled Sierra Space's engineering staff, who have been looking forward to clearing the series of gated tests so they can get to a full in-orbit demonstration. The testing for fabric-based designs is understandably stringent, there are a lot of benefits to inflatable modules, but there just haven't been many real-world tests of them to inspire more confidence. The only inflatable HAB to ever have been tested in space was the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM, constructed by Bigelow Aerospace and sent to the ISS back in 2016, and stayed there until 2020. That test was successful and showed some surprising advantages to inflatable modules. The first is somewhat obvious, because it's inflatable, the module doesn't have to be aerodynamic and can simply be packed into a rocket's fuselage until it's in space. 
The second is that most of these modules are made from overlapping sheets of fabrics like Kevlar, Mylar, and in the case of Sierra's life module, a fabric called Vectrin, which goes rigid once inflated. This lends the module more protection against debris strikes than even the more traditional hard shell aluminum designs. And finally, some designs even sport better radiation protection, again, depending on their construction. The issue, of course, is that they are a new technology and people get a little nervous when you tell them that a bit of fabric is all that's protecting you from the vacuum of space. So, a series of tests is being conducted, one after another, to thoroughly check the new Sierra Space module for any engineering shortfalls. The team will take the next 24 months to finish this testing gauntlet, and then another 12 months after that to finish developing their flight hardware. It's hard not to get swept up in the Sierra team's excitement, they have some cool new tech, and they know it. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.